Okay, uh, get your Bibles out, get your notes out. This lesson is going to change your life forever, Amen. forever. Uh, turn over to uh, Genesis chapter 1. <laughs> so this was originally entitled um, Rules for Christian Living Part 2. But uh, after studying the Bible for a little while and putting this together, I changed it to something else. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And so I was studying out rules, and I came up with a totally different <laughs> lesson when I uh, started looking at the different times the word rule is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so it says here that God created both men and women to what? Rule. To rule. So the title of the lesson is Disciples Rule. Aww. Disciples Rule. And so just look. At the sister across the table or next to you, and just tell her, you rule. You rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You rule. You rule. <laughs> All right. It's true, though, and you got to believe it. And I think that's that's how Satan gets us is uh, we start to believe that we don't rule. Go ahead and turn over to Ephesians chapter 5. Come on. Now, it says that we are to subdue everything. To subdue means to bring under control even by force if necessary. And so, women, you're to subdue everything on earth including your sinful nature Amen. ephesians 5 in verse uh, 1 it says follow god's example therefore as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love just as christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering wow. and sacrifice to god wow. he made us in his image and he wants us to imitate god god's example and what did he do he, he gave us jesus and jesus sacrificed his feelings his temptations keeping himself pure for us and so for yourself uh you have to understand that you were created to rule that's why you were created to rule over the earth as disciples and over yourself mm -hmm. and so you need to have an expectation of yourself that you are going to rule over your feelings over your temptations uh -huh. over the uh, willingness to sacrifice and to keep yourself pure the way jesus did mm -hmm. and so you got to rule over those things and have an expectation of your brothers and sisters to be the same way mm -hmm. and so that's my first point created to rule mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3. My second point is the serpent takes over the world. The serpent takes over the world. He kind of messes things up, you know. Genesis chapter 3. In verse 1, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, 
we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. And so Satan comes in and is uh, tempting her. And she looks at it and is like, hmm, that food is uh, good. And it's pleasing to the eye. And it's desirable for gaining wisdom. Look in uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. You're going to see something very familiar here. First John chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Amen. And you see the same three things here in verse 16. The lust of the flesh, good for food. Lust of the eyes, pleasing to the eye, and the pride of life. And this is what she saw. I can gain wisdom. So these three things come from the world. And we have to understand that this is from Satan, and it's trying to take us out. Uh, look back in Genesis chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Verse 1, it says, Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Mm -hmm. But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. And so what's happening? What does God see in Cain? His face is downcast. That is a feeling. This is a feeling that he's not able to control. He is angry. What is that? That is a feeling. Now, if you look up the word feeling in the Bible, you know how many times it comes up? Zero. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. But it's filled with different kinds of feelings in there. Temptation starts with a feeling. It looks like it's good for the body. It's food, right? The flesh. It's a, it starts with a feeling. Um, the lust of the eyes sparks a feeling. I know when I'm uh, driving in a convertible uh, Jaguar pulls up right next to me. <laughs> Like for a second, it's got me on. Oh, look at that. Uh, oh, control yourself, Dave. Control yourself. God commands us to rule over our sinful feelings. Mm -hmm. Now, there are good feelings that God gives us. Joy, peace, happiness. Those are good. But we also have to control those as well. Yeah. because we don't always wake up joyful and full of zeal and happy and so when we're not we've got to rule over that yeah. and get ourselves there yeah. you've got to rule that part of you and when you're feeling fear or doubt or shame or angry or downcast or depressed god says you got to rule over those feelings because it will take you out it wants to control you it wants to lead you into sin look at ephesians chapter 2 
Now, this is the reason you can't get over it right here. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Did I tell you where we were? No. I'm sorry. Ephesians, two, Ephesians yeah. chapter 2, oh, okay. verse 1. Okay. Verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. disobedient. So when you decide... I am not going to be full of joy. Mm -hmm. You're disobedient. Now, who's at work in you? Yeah. Satan is at work in you. Satan is at work in anyone who is disobedient. Mm -hmm. And he is going to take you down the wrong path. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. In verse 14, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Mm -hmm. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Wow. Jesus can relate with all the things that you're going through. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was tempted. In other words, he felt all the things that you feel. Temptation is a feeling. Yeah. And yet he didn't go there. He ruled over his feelings. It says uh, that uh, with joy, he went on the cross. Like, I just can't understand how he did that. Uh, but he did because he ruled his feelings. Uh, Romans chapter 6. Created to rule. Rule over your sinful feelings. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Remember, you rule. <laughs> Verse 3. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Mm -hmm. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. To rule, you must die. Mm. You must die. Verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free yeah. from sin. Mm. You know, I was, uh, I was thinking about how we get baptized, we're super fired up, mm -hmm. and then we go right back to the old sins mm -hmm. that we're in the world. And we go, man, why do people do that? Why do we allow ourselves to do that? And uh, it led me to the study of uh, battered women's syndrome. Mm -hmm. And so they decide they're done with this relationship and they want to escape it. Um, but the studies show that they have a difficult time regaining control of their thoughts and their actions. And so they figured out how to cure them. Diagnosis, safety, validation, risk and assessment, then treatment. This is God's plan. Diagnosis, first principles, right? We help them figure out where they're at. Uh, safety. God gave us the kingdom, validation, unconditional love uh, from us and from Christ. Uh, risk, we trust one another. It's a gamble sometimes because a brother or sister can, yep. can turn their back on you. But we still do it unconditionally, even yes. though it's a risk to do these things. Then treatment. 
that's getting into deeper sins and helping them get out of those. What's that called? Discipling. <laughs> and so God figured it out for us. We can get out of those things. Those who have died are done away with their sin. You just got to believe it that you can rule over those feelings. Let's keep reading Romans 6 verse 8. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness. But rather, offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Wow. For sin shall no longer be your master because you're not under the law, but under grace. You've got to rule over your sinful nature and you've got to offer every part of yourself to God mm -hmm. as an instrument of righteousness. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 9. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you've been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through your faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. And so you remember your baptism. Yeah. Uh, all your sins were forgiven. You were added to the amazing kingdom. And you were given the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. He gave you the power to be able to overcome these things. Verse 20. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgences. See, when you follow rules that sound good, but they contradict the Bible, mm -hmm. they're not going to work for you. Right. They're not going to help you overcome those things. Right. And people can give you advice, uh, do this, do that. It, and it sounds right. Oh, I should do that in my marriage. Oh, I should do that with my finances. Oh, really? If I get this credit card, it'll help my credit. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to hear things. And the Bible says, let no debt remain outstanding. Mm -hmm. And yet we continue to get more and more in debt, even though the Bible says, don't do these things. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, how we treat our spouses. The Bible says clearly how we're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. But someone, uh, you know, Dr. Phil or Oprah said something different. You're like, oh, that sounds smart. I should do that. Uh, but if it goes against the Bible, you're never going to win. God is going to oppose that. You've got to make sure that the advice you're following is biblical from the yeah. Bible. Yeah. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another if any one of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. My fourth point is let love rule. Let love rule. We got to make sure that we are completely united in his kingdom. He talks about dealing with grievances and being completely united. 
And uh, that can be an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, someone does something, someone says something, and uh, you don't deal with the feelings. Yeah. Remember, the feelings is where the temptation is. And how you deal with the feelings, you got to rule over those and get unified. That's got to be how, what you decide to obey. I am going to make every effort to be unified. Ephesians 4 nice. says that. And so you got to make sure that you obey the scriptures. Get completely unified with his kingdom and get resolved with one another. Verse 15. Let the peace of Christ, what, rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him we gotta let the peace of christ rule in our heart mm -hmm. if you're struggling with fear then the peace of christ is not ruling wow. instead that issue is what's ruling mm -hmm. uh and so whatever the issue is you gotta you gotta figure it out if you're not at peace something else is your master wow and you gotta deal with that and he has given you the power to rule we gotta teach and admonish. Uh, look at uh, Luke 16. Actually, uh, let's just go to Proverbs. Proverbs 11. Come on, Dave. We're going to look at a few Proverbs here. To close out. Each of us has an issue. Something yeah. that has been ruling us. And it's time to rule it. So that we can have the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Proverbs 11, 14. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Chapter 12, 15. The way of fools seem right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Chapter 13, 10. Where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Chapter 15, verse 31 says, Whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord, and humility comes before honor. Mm -hmm. Chapter 19 Verse 20, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you'll be counted among the wise. Mm -hmm. Chapter 24, verse 6, surely you need guidance to wage war and victory is won through many advisors. And my favorite one is 27, chapter 27, verse 9. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Mm -hmm. Whatever the issue is, you got to come up with a plan, and you've got to get advice on how to implement that. Mm -hmm. What that does is it brings God into the picture, because when you think you know what you're doing, and you might have the best answer, but your lack of humility mm -hmm. will get opposition from god yeah. james chapter four yeah. but your humility even if you've done this thing a, a million times but you're going to start again you're going to you're going to wage war against this thing that has gotten you got a grip on you mm -hmm. come up with a plan get advice and god will then lift you up that's what he says he lifts up uh the humble and so just remember that uh, you were created to rule. You got to rule over your sinful feelings. Offer every part of yourself to God as an instrument of righteousness. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Pick one thing that rules you right now and make a plan. Get advice and just remember 
disciples are born to rule. Ooh.